Hey guys, so this is the brand new lens by Tamron. It's the 17 by 28 millimeter wide angle f2.8 lens for Sony E-mount cameras. It's the successor to the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter lens, but is even shorter and lighter than its predecessor. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of its capability with sample photos, videos, autofocus, and a lot more. So let's just get straight into it. Starting off with the design and build, it's not the smallest lens out there, but for full frame lenses, it's definitely the lightest and a very compact lens. It feels like a cheaper build than most lenses out there because it's made of durable plastic rather than solid metal, but Tamron saves costs and returns that cost saving back to the customers at huge discounts, which is why it comes in at a reasonable £899 as compared to the high-end full-frame lenses out there. The lens no longer extends when zooming, instead the zoom takes place right in front of the focus ring. The length of the lens is 99mm and it has the same diameter of the previous Tamron 28-75mm to lens which is approximately 73mm. Now let's take a look at some photos and see how the pictures came out under the auto setting of my Sony a7 III. As with most wide angle lenses, they are really great at landscape photography, capturing everything and more that you need. Now taking these sample pictures at 17mm wide angle, I have to say I was quite surprised at how super sharp the pictures were at full aperture, even from corner to corner. Nonetheless, you can see there is real clarity, sharp colours and is still excellent for demanding applications such as Final Cut Pro or Adobe editing programs. Now just to show you how much of a difference in zoom there is between the 17mm and the 28mm focal length, here is some comparisons I put together. All the pictures were taken on auto setting and I've displayed the aperture f-stops that were generated. One of the main reasons that people buy DSLR cameras is for the awesome portrait photography that they can produce. So let's now take a look at some close-up photos and see how soft of a background blur you can see. Of course, with a 17mm at f2.8, you don't get a very soft, almost impressionistic background, but on a full-frame camera, you do get a gradient in sharpness. Take a look at how soft the background is as I get closer to the camera in these shots, which I've set at 24mm focal length. And actually, I was pleasantly surprised. It has maintained a bokeh effect quite well and has a soft depth of field without bleeding over the edges of my body in any way. In these other close-up photos, I've taken them all at 17mm to see the gradient in the background using very wide angle shots and you will see that even then it makes that gradient look soft and organic. An excellent job by Tamron on this front. But if you take the same pic at both 17 and 28mm, keeping the same distance, you can definitely see the difference in sharpness and gradient blur in the background as you can see from the picture here. Next, I played around with the autofocus on movie recording mode to test the speed and clarity of autofocus. The Tamron RXD, which stands for Rapid Extra Silent Stepping Drive, provides a motor that is quiet, fast and accurate. In this first clip, I was walking towards the camera to see if I could get out of focus at any point and it held up really well and I was on focus the whole time. Now to test the speed of the autofocus, I put my hand in front of the camera at different speeds and can see it took around 2 seconds to register the focus, which was my third attempt in this clip. Again, on the speed, when you pan away from the close-up object, the autofocus will be very fast, but when trying to focus back onto the close-up object, it takes a second or two to pick up the focus as you can see here. And finally, this didn't work 100% of the time. Here, I panned away, it focused on the distance, and when panning back, it didn't capture the close-up focus until I stepped back a little and moved into the pole again, but for the majority of the situations, it did a great job. The Sony a7 cameras have great stabilization, but this Tamron lens has no stabilization inbuilt into it. As you can see from these clips of me walking and then running, it is very shaky, so ideally you'd have to get a gimbal so that you can record smooth cinematic footage for this lens and this camera. In conclusion, I would have to say that this lens has more pros than cons, with the pros being that it's very light, bright, compact, has an internal zoom, has fast autofocus and is weatherproof, and it's a lot cheaper than a lot of full frame lenses on the market right now. The pictures are very sharp and great for landscape and architecture photography, and you can actually get some very good portrait photography with this lens as well. The cons on the other hand are that it has no stabilization, 
The lens is plastic, so if you do drop it, you might damage it more easily. There are no switches on the lens and it has a slightly shorter range than comparable lenses. So I hope you found this review useful guys. I have another Tamron review video coming out very soon. It's for nighttime photography and video recording just to give you an idea of actually how well it works in very low lighting conditions. So make sure you hit that subscribe button to not miss that. If you have any questions, let me know below. Check out the relevant purchase links in the description and I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care.